Um, I don't know if I can pronounce his name, so he's gonna probably do it better than me. If you have your silence, you've got a few more acts, a little bit of music, and we'll be wrapping up soon, yeah? Thank you. Hello, you all right? Hello, it's my birthday and I'll cry if I want to. Fly if I want to, ride if I want to. It's my birthday and I'll cry if I want to. Fly if I want to, ride if I want to. It's my birthday and I'll cry if I want to. Fly if I want to, ride if I want to. Come on. Hey, listen, you know what? I apologise for walking in like that. I hate walking in on, on, on people's performances. I really apologise. That woman was amazing, wherever she is. And I'm sorry for missing this show. But I've come like all the way from Reading today. So that's like three hours. <laughs> so I do apologise. I'm not usually rude like that. Excuse me. Thanks for having me. Right, make some noise for my man, you know. Come on. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Malise, and you can find me on Instagram, who is, at who is Mr. Malise, all one word. Um, I'm going to go through it without talking loads. Well, I've already talked loads already, but... <laughs> this is called Ruthless by myself. Uh, it's about homeless. I do, I, I talk about social issues quite a lot. Ruthless. Head hanging with a heavy heart and hurting your soul. Brave in the cold in shoes with holes in the soles. Has anybody listened to the stories you've told? You sleep there every night, the streets ain't paved with gold. Curled in a ball under donated blankets with Sainsbury's written on two cardboard mattresses. Someone just came along and snapchatted you with sandwiches that they bought. You said thanks, but that was freaking embarrassing. I don't think they realise how you're living to be ruthless. Even though they can see the way you're living is ruthless. And the truth is, you're fully aware that changes need to be made, but right now you're penniless and some change needs to be made. You say you're begging on the streets, but you're hardly collecting. And when they're calling you a junkie, stay calm and collective. Because nobody ever asks you, how did you get here? They look down and walk past, go home and forget shit. Like you never existed. Didn't care that you was in care as a kid. Never knew that your dad went down for a six when you were six and it turned your mum into an alcoholic. But that she attempted suicide and nearly died from taking tablets. But that she moved her boyfriend in, who'd rather kick you than kick a crack habit. Now that's damage. You knew more about class A's than getting A's in class. Lost your childhood because you was raised too fast. When people look at you saying, don't believe in the past, you look up, shake your head and say, you don't know the half. <laughs> I've never performed this before, but like, it's a little bit romantic and all that. It's my birthday and I'll cry if I want to, cry if I want to, rhyme if I want to. It's my birthday and I'll cry if I want to, fly if I want to, rhyme if I want to. It's my birthday and I'll cry if I want to, fly if I want to, rhyme if I want to. Why not? Oh, this is called Flowers Through Concrete, and it's not about one particular person. I don't know, it's just like experiences, and never if you put into one, I think. Maybe, I don't know. I worked it out. Flowers Through Concrete. You know sometimes when you're walking along a path and you might randomly see some flowers amongst grass seemingly growing straight through the concrete. Well, that's like you wouldn't. Because somebody might just walk past and not necessarily appreciate the beauty. Or understand what we went through just to be here. When we met, it was like we realised we were planted in the same space for a reason. You've been trying to climb through hard times and I think you said you had a feeling that my story wasn't much different. The more we talked, the more we gave each other pieces of us. And in order to move forward, we needed to make peace with our past. There were times when I'd lift you on my shoulders and try to leapfrog over our barriers. Not knowing what the future holds or where the wind would carry us. But still, we fell head over hills through meadows and fields. I'm not sure when, but we agreed to let go and build. And you could talk to me about all your insecurities, lay on my chest and fall asleep with my loyalty. Honestly, I had trust issues then, but I promise you all of me. Anyway, I rate the way we can rave till the next day or just stay in sometimes, watch films and get a takeaway. Totally entangled, baby. 
away from our enemies. Playful but penniless, just baking our memories. Us against the world and nobody can F with this. Remember this, when I'm sitting on your kitchen side and you tiptoe to get a kiss. Now that's ultra cute. I don't know what it is, but I feel proud when I'm holding you. And I hope you're proud too, going out with an older dude. <laughs> don't rub it in. <laughs> but age is nothing but a number. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. But age is nothing but a number. I'll be flirty forever. We can always mess about and be nerdy together. Talking for hours about space and religion, even though your opinion is majorly different. You get angry when I talked and get mad when I didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone knows what I mean, that's why. <laughs> so I'd call you a brat, because with you there's no winning. Like when you ask me to choose out of five pairs of shoes, and I'd say the black ones, so you'd say the blue. But that's just you. And that's just me trying to help with your heels. That's my way of saying thank you, because you helped me to heal. See that right there? Yeah, I felt that from hell. Which is why when your eyes are wide shut, and the stars are voluminous, I whisper in your ear, you're the center of my universe. Because you mean more to me than just a panda or a bracelet. We've laughed and we've cried, we've handled it, we've faced it. So today is your day. Go and choose your best dress. And go out and celebrate the prince with his princess. And we'll walk along that path where the grass and the flowers grew. Then I'll turn, turn around and say, P.S. I love you. Absolute stars. I right, make some noise for yourselves, you know. Woo! You know what you should do? Do you know what you should do right now? Have you got a phone right there? Yeah. Can you film this? Just quickly. Yeah. Have you got a memory? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to stand up to film it. I, I mean, I, I can film it. Oh, all you've got to do, yeah? Who come here? Who come here? Are you filming yet? Who come here today with their best friend? Who come here? What, you come here with your best friend? Turn to your best friend right now. Turn to your best friend. Give him a cuddle. Everyone, everyone, give him a cuddle. If you haven't got a best friend, then just give him a hug. Give someone next to you a hug. Everyone, I like that. Everyone's walking around to feel my best friend. Look at that. Oh, give him a cuddle. Give him a cuddle. Hey, after three, tell your best friend I love you. After three. No, not yet, not yet. Not yet. No, no, no. No, no, no. After three. Not yet. After three, tell your best friend I love you. One. Two, three. Now, now after three, make more noise than your best friend. Can you do that? After three, make more noise than your best friend. One, two, three. Is anyone having a good time? Are you having a good time? Um, okay, this is like a bit more serious now. I'll shoot you up, so take you. Alright, let's settle down, people. A little bit. He's gonna finish up. Yeah. I'm, 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 when I was 19, I never really thought about it when I was 19, but when I older, I was, had a period of reflection and I thought, you know what, it's all a bit mad at the minute, I needed to start a charity. Um, if you don't mind, I've got like a little charity bucket like, that I might just put there. Is that alright? 
So I mean, it's nice trying to get into the country. But I'll put it just at the corner if you don't mind, like even just like 42p. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So this is a little bit more. This is called Knife Sentence, and I, I, I dedicate it to everyone that's lost their lives or been affected by knife crime in London and further afield. Have we ever stopped to ask that boy that carries a knife what he wants to do when he's older? If his parents are still together and who his role models are? Because I guarantee you he don't live next door to a doctor. Instead he's more than likely to be riding with fucks. And they're the ones in the community prescribing the drugs and driving those cars. And I wonder if, as a teenager, he's watching how the oldest carry themselves and it's learned behavior. I wonder if by the age of 12 he never had a father and why? At the age of 13 he had his first balaclava. Was he ever scared? Is it that mom don't care or is it just that she was never there? Maybe she's out trying to provide for the family. And by the time she gets back, she feels tired and angry. And the arguments at home is there a lack of affection. And the boys outside offering you protection. From the youths up the road in a different postcode. The reason why you always go the long way home. So the olders on the block become your bigger brothers. Now it's almost as if you're related to each other. Gang related. Now we've got a council estate kid filled with hatred who needs to be initiated before he's fully affiliated. Is that environment just making him numb? Does he have a choice or is it safety in numb? Does because they're not meant to be your mentors. That's what we need grown men for to lead by example and to nurture ambition, to teach discipline, to understand and to listen. And I apologise for generalising, for coming across like I'm stereotyping. But we all need to know we are marginalising a whole generation when we criminalise them. Who really wants to end up in prison or dying? And the social networks make it all look exciting. The way that gangs incite violence live online and it's followed by an advert to make sure we're still buying. And I'm not about to blame it all on drill. But thoughts become words and words become real. So tell me there's not a vested interest in what's manifesting when all the kids can hear is I splashed him and I chefed him, dipped him outside of his house and then left him. His mum to find him. Have you been to a funeral and heard the mother crying? When her son's in the ground, it sounds like she's dying. And it's been like this for years, wiping those tears and printing those teeth, saying, put the knife down, blaming police. Right into our local MPs. I see mums at knife crime rallies begging on their knees like, they've took my son, but make it stop, please. And it's our responsibility. Have you heard it takes a village to raise a child? But we're losing our communities to the left to run wild. And this isn't the time for answers and excuses, but the youngers need to know there's consequences for their offences. Justice will be served if you're caught and let go. Because when you take a life, you forfeit it all. Yeah. 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 Yeah.